Today, my dad and I are gonna make a kielbasa recipe that has been in our family for several generations. This kielbasa performs. Let's get it on. In this video, we're gonna show you the complete end-to-end -end process of making kielbasa from scratch. That's gonna include grinding up the meats, mixing all the spices, stuffing it in casings, and smoking this sausage. We're gonna do over 25 pounds of kielbasa, though you guys can definitely scale this down if you wanna make a smaller batch at home. Also, I did wanna point out a little background about kielbasa. So kielbasa in Poland literally just means sausage and can kind of refer to any type of sausage. There are a bunch of varieties in Poland. Eventually, I wanna to visit today, I've not been. But in the US, when we make kielbasa, it's generally going to refer to what we are making today, which is a smoked pork sausage, usually in kind of a U shape with some pretty basic spices. Though simple, kielbasa is one of the most flavorful and delicious sausages out there. And in a lot of Polish families, it's enjoyed around Christmas time or Easter time. Actually, my dad was telling me while we were making this video that he remembers helping out when they made over a thousand pounds of kielbasa during Easter at the family meat shop. But I think that's enough of the backstory. Sit back, relax, and uh, let's make 25 pounds of kielbasa. When it comes to making kielbasa, there's three primary processes that we have to do. First up, let's talk spices and the meat, which is gonna contain mixing the spices, grinding the meat, and binding the sausage. Now this kielbasa recipe was written down by my grandpa on paper from 1966, which is over 50 years ago, and we had it framed a couple years back. A couple cool things to point out. So this recipe is for 100 pounds of pork. Today we're only doing 25 pounds. So imagine this much kielbasa times four. Also, the recipe that we use today is exactly the same except for marjoram. The reason why? Well, back in World War II times, there was a shortage on marjoram, so it was not included and kind of got left out over the years. But my dad has since added the marjoram back in. For the meat itself, you ideally want a 70 to 30 lean to fat ratio. Now, typically this is all pork. For this one, my dad did actually add an extra little bit of beef with about 20% lean beef. This recipe could also be done with venison or whatever meat you choose. The key is having that 70 to 30 lean to fat ratio. Let's make some kobas. Here are the percentages of spices by weight based on the amount of meat. So however much meat you have, just multiply by the percentages to get your spice output. You're gonna roughly mix the spices together and now we're going to pour these all over the meat. One very important thing to point out, if you're grinding your own meat like we are, use very cold, even almost frozen meat. The reason why is because the meat will grind infinitely better. You want it to come out in a clean grind like this. If the meat is in the fridge and then the temperature has risen a bit before grinding, the fat can be kind of pasty and mushy, which can lead to a weird texture kielbasa. Once the spices are completely mixed, we're gonna go over to the grinder. Now this is a heavy duty meat grinder, but other options can be out there for smaller meat grinder, or if all else fails, you can actually hand chop sausage. It does take a long ass time, but you can do it. With this meat grinder, it makes running through 25 pounds of meat absolute clockwork. With the meat ground up, the last thing we need to do is bind the meat. The importance of binding sausage is the texture in the final product. If we were to skip this step, you would end up with a kind of crumbly sausage as opposed to a nice homogenous one. To do that, my dad poured water into the spice bowl to capture those excess spices and then pours the water into the ground meat and starts to work it together. We don't use specific measurements for the amount of water that you need. This is more of a by feel thing to see how much you want to add. So what he is doing is mixing by hand, then adding water and adjusting as he goes. At the end of the process, this is what the texture should be like. Notice how it clumps together and even sticks to his hand without falling? That is what you were looking for. At this point, what you have is fresh kielbasa. It's just not stuffed or smoked. A favorite lunch of ours when making sausage is to save a little, or if you get a casing blowout, you can fry this up into a nice burger and enjoy. 
insanely delicious. With that first phase done, let's move to stuffing. So stuffing sausage really just contains putting it into the casing, twisting it into links, and then drying the sausage before smoking. To create sausage links, this is done in a casing. These can be natural made from animal intestines or artificial ones made from collagen and cellulose. Which you decide to use is up to you, though my dad prefers the natural casings. These were 35 millimeter hog casings. To stuff the sausage, we do so in an F. Dick manual sausage stuffer with a crank. This one holds around 10 to 12 pounds of sausage. I'll have a link to this one, though there are plenty of other smaller options out there. Fill the sausage by plopping it into the container. You want to slam it down so no air pockets create because that'll mess up the stuffing when it pushes out. Once filled, there's an airlock top that gets cranked down to push the sausage out. You're going to slightly crank that sausage stuffer until it just appears at the end of the tube. And now we're going to slide the casing over it. Crank the sausage stuffer and guide the sausage out in a circle. And there you have one massage kielbasa link. Just repeat this process until you're all out of meat, filling up the container with more sausage as needed. And here's a cool little POV shot of the sausage coming out of the stuffer. Let me quickly time lapse the rest of this. In probably less than five minutes, we have all the sausage stuffed, and now there's one thing to do before we turn it into links. What we need to do is just remove some air pockets, and we do this with this little spiky stabber thing. And you'll notice that there is little air pockets within the sausage, but all you have to do is just go over this, and all the air will dissipate out, and now we can turn it into links. To create links, all you have to do is twist the casing. You kind of pinch the sausage together, and then just twirl it. This plumps together the sausage and creates a natural hanging point. With the sausage all twisted, now we're going to let this dry a little bit before smoking. We place the sausage on these rods that will be placed right in the smoker. Notice how the casings are kind of sleek and wet? We want to remove that so the smoke adheres better to the casing in the smoker. Also, make sure you get all your camera angles in there. So basically just load it up and now we're going to speed along this process by placing a fan to move the air over them so it dries out a little bit faster. This is what the sausage should look like about three or so hours later. Now let's talk about the final step, smoking. Smoking is really as simple as setting up in a smoker and blooming the kielbasa. My dad has a large smokehouse, but there are plenty of different smoking options you could use. You could do this in a Weber grill setup for smoking. I have a video showing the setup, or you could get a small electric smoker. To do this for the large smokehouse, we set up the rods in the smoker and start a fire. We set a fire in the side component and it feeds through to the ventilation at the bottom of the smokehouse, providing heat and smoke to the sausage. We're looking to smoke these until the internal temperature reads 150 degrees Fahrenheit, so we'll meet you back here in a couple hours. Open it up and this is what the sausage are looking like. You can see it has that beautiful kind of mahogany red color. And now there is one final step before these are done and that is blooming. Blooming is cooling down the sausage with water. We do this by pouring water over the sausage, but this could also be done by putting it in a bowl of water or something like that. What this does is a couple things. Number one, it cools down the outside sausage so it doesn't continue cooking. Number two, it keeps the casing nice and plump, and it also brings out the color of the kielbasa a little bit. With the sausages covered in water, now we're going to throw them in this walk-in cooler to store before packaging. What we typically do if storing, freezing, or sending off to a friend or family member is setting up a nice vacuum pack to help retain the freshness. Fill up the bag, label it, pop it in the vacuum sealer, and you're good to go. Now I'm going to take a couple of these into the kitchen, slice them up, and see what they look like. See how we have that nice cohesive texture? That's because we did that binding process where we mixed the meat. 
Now, a lot of commercial kielbasa you see has a really smooth bind, almost like a hot dog. To get that, you would spend much more time mixing and binding the sausage. However, we prefer this kind of semi-coarse texture. Now, to actually eat these, typically they are served with sauerkraut or crisped up and put in a bun. I didn't have any of these on hand, so I just threw some in a pan. They crisp up super nice. Fatty, juicy, with spices and smoke. The flavor is absolutely on point. Goes really well with mustard. And there we have some finished kielbasa from scratch. So that's gonna wrap it up for the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed learning about kielbasa and I would definitely go about making this one at home if you want to. I mean, obviously there's a lot of special equipment that my dad has because he's very into charcuterie and all these things. But you could definitely do this at a very easily with an at-home version by you know picking up some ground pork, mixing those spices. You could just make those little kind of kielbasa burgers if you wanted to. Those are delicious in their own right. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed, and I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.